The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network. The Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk and the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. Brought to you by Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Green Coach Tours, proudly serving the traveling public since 1945. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Johnson City, Jonesboro, Morristown, Cleveland, and Greenville. Creekside Markets, don't pass by, stop by, with three locations in Greene County. Special consideration from Comcast Cable through Xfinity. And now, the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. The Tusculum Pioneers are fresh off their victory against the Wingate Bulldogs at the Pembroke Braves coming into town at Pioneer Field. Hello again, everyone. Brian Staten for the Frankie DeBus Show. We'll be joined by Pioneer coach Frankie DeBus coming up. Now, the Pioneers and Mother Nature aren't getting along right now as far as their field is concerned from Pioneer Field at the Nicewanger Sports Complex. In the forecast, a winter weather storm hit East Tennessee, dropped about two and a half inches of snow in the valleys, up to about eight inches in the mountains. As a matter of fact, teams in the South Atlanta Conference were not even able to play on Saturday because they had shut down parts of Interstate 40. There were two officials who not, were not even able to make the game against Pembroke. But in the end, the Pioneers still played the Pembroke Braves, who had come over the night before, got here before all of the bad weather. Now, it was senior day because we'll play Thursday against the Brevard Tornadoes. And there were 18 seniors on this Pioneer football team, 18 meaningful seniors. And the most meaningful was a guy who was going to get his first start at quarterback since 2011 against the Pembroke Braves. This was fifth-year senior Kyle Dickey's turn to shine. He led the Pioneers from a 10-0 hole last week against Wingate to a 14-10 victory after the defense held, keeping Wingate out of the end zone from going 99 yards. This year, Kyle Dickey was looking to atone for his first start ever in 2011 against the Pembroke Braves, where he lasted only a quarter. Torrey Slavin would come in and throw for 438 yards in that game through three quarters, but the Pioneers would lose 58-38. So it's a different set of rules. It's a different situation. It's a fifth-year senior taking the ball and winning a football game for Tusculum College. Now, it's the fourth meeting all time between Tusculum and Pembroke in the series that hasn't quite picked up just yet, so we're not sure if this series will be renewed anytime soon. For Pembroke, they have a new head coach in Shane Richardson, who was on that staff at North Dakota State when the Pioneers went up there in 2003. He's been on the staff as the defensive coordinator at Pembroke for Coach Pete Shinnick, who went down to start the West Florida program. Coach Shinnick has proven the ability to start programs because with Pembroke in six years, they were winning from the very beginning and making the playoffs. Pembroke won't make the playoffs this season as they are now 1-7 and seven as the Pioneers in overtime knock off the Pembroke Braves by a final score of 20-17. to 17. There'll be a lot of numbers in the game, and I can think of one now, 0 for 11. Pioneers did not convert a single third down in the football game. Deion Hicks, second touchdown reception of the season, his second in as many games, is quite possibly the most meaningful touchdown in Pioneer football history. You can say well, what you want about a lot of great catches through a lot of great seasons, but in this situation, knowing that the game was either won or lost, knowing that the season could be a winning season or a losing season, and knowing that 18 seniors depended on that ball to be caught, is may, maybe the biggest play in Pioneer football history. You can be the judge. It was one of the most thrilling finishes that I've ever been a part of, and quite honestly, you'll get a chance to hear part of that, and you'll be able to put the vision of what you see as to what you hear as well. It's 18 seniors. It's Kyle Dickey. It's the Pembroke Braves. It's a mud fest. Mother Nature not kind to the Pioneers in Pioneer Field. You'll get a chance to see some of those pictures as well as we move on. Tusculum knocking off Pembroke. For Coach DeBusk, it's his first win ever against the Braves, his 31st opponent that he has a win against, and his 90th all-time for the school's winningest football coach. He joins us next when the Frankie DeBus Show continues. Your Greenville Light and Power System and electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Greene County since 1945. 
York Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Andrew Johnson Bank was founded on conservative banking principles. Over the last 30 years, they have steadily built their balance sheet and increased capital by following prudent lending principles and avoiding risky investments. In uncertain times, you can continue to count on Andrew Johnson Bank, your locally owned community bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Andrew Johnson Bank, member FDIC. Showtime. Uh -huh. You know what it is. Everything we do, we do it big. Uh -huh. Screaming that's not when we step up on the field. That's not a small town, but we still do it very big. Back in ours, back in ours, back in ours, back in ours. We grind hard for the rings with the diamonds on it. Back in ours, back in ours, back in ours, back in ours. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBunch Show. The Tusculum Pioneers in overtime knock off the Pembroke Braves, joined by Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk. A day that we, we walked into knowing that defense would have to do the job to make sure a team didn't get hot offensively. I think that was the case. But I believe the field conditions, the weather was the great equalizer, and it forced them not to have to pass the football, which is what we would hope they would do a little bit. Brian and I really thought we played well defensively under the circumstances. Uh, they, they had a good plan. They did a good job. They were... Uh, just trying to make sure that uh, they didn't do anything to lose the ball game. They threw it a couple times early, and we got some some picks. And uh, they threw it a couple times late, but uh, didn't have a lot of success. And just really proud of how hard we played defensively. I felt like we had given up a few more rush yards than we did. Um, but looking back at it, you know, they, we really didn't give up many big plays. There was a drive there at one point in the second quarter they put together and had some success. But otherwise, from that, I thought we played really well from a defensive standpoint. And meanwhile, senior day and a fifth-year senior getting a start against a team that he didn't have a lot of success with early in his career. And he comes through in a big way. Got the, got the lead, but field position didn't allow us to do a lot in the second half. I, I believe that Kyle Dickey played the kind of football game he needs to play in those circumstances. He gave us a chance to win the football game. And, uh, you know, he didn't make many mistakes. He made it through a few errant throws so that, that he'd like to have back. But really proud of how he, proud of how he controlled the game. And, you know, people don't realize hanging onto a football just to catch the snap and hand it off or catch a snap and especially try to throw a pass is so challenging under those conditions. And I uh, thought we did a good job hanging on to the ball. I thought we did a good job snapping the ball. I thought we did a good job uh, with our long snapper on our special teams and our punter catching it and our, you know, extra point and field goal unit. I thought we did a good job under those those circumstances. But I uh, really thought uh, Kyle played well. I'm happy for him. You know, his family was here. They were excited. and. Uh, it's not gone exactly how you go to college and want to do it at the quarterback position for Kyle, but just having an opportunity to play last week and do well and then getting a chance to start on senior day and, and uh, not only winning the football game, but winning in the fashion we did, that's something that he'll remember for the rest of his life. Maybe the most thrilling finish in a college football game, which you'll get to see coming up, but first we had to start the football game, so let's do that. We take a look at our first half highlights, Tusculum versus Pembroke in the fourth meeting all time. They were celebrating senior day because of a Saturday game, and there were 18 seniors to be recognized on this particular Saturday. And Coach, we're getting ready. We're coming out. It's an emotional time. I was really concerned how the team would react, and quite honestly, did pretty well. Well, you know, some of our coaches actually were saying, our seniors need to let it be emotional. Don't try to hold it back. Don't try to you know, act like you're a tough guy. Be emotional. Get it out, and let's go win the football game. And uh, we had some of the guys step up and make plays at times we needed them to in that, that group of seniors. Offensively, we go a three and out to start the football game. Seth Owen gets the start for Pembroke. His first drive from the 35 would be for five yards. And then Seth Owen was looking downfield. They didn't throw it very often late. And when they threw it early, we were usually there to pick it off. Great play here by Cam Thomas. Cam's just a young man from up in Kentucky that's playing exceptionally well. He was one of our players of the week. And just keeps getting better and better, has three interceptions on the year now, and happy for him to make that play, and that was a very athletic play, made it look pretty easy, but great job by our defensive football team to stop him. All right, so the Pioneers get the football, and first and 10, D.J. Haney, who's in start for Fernando Smith, a bit banged up, and he just plows right up the middle for nine I'm telling yards. you what, he's hard to bring down, he's hard-nosed, he's running it downhill more and more, he's getting more comfortable back there and just running it hard, and 
just really proud of what he can do for us, and he's just going to be a great football player before he gets out of here. Cal Dickey for a first down and then looking for Kenny Funny. Just couldn't grip the football. That one kind of slipped out of his hands, but they go right back to Kenny Funny. Yeah, so, you know, it is hard to hang on to the ball. I thought we were going to score here. Great job by Wes. Great job by Justin blocking and hitting old Kenny Funny there, and I'm sure he didn't, didn't like playing in these snowy conditions where he's from down there in South Carolina. Okay, it's just tough sledding. Uh, obviously, Mother Nature has not done the field many favors. Uh, this year. DJ Haney though gets the football after slipping on first down and DJ Haney takes it to the one yard line after a 14 yard pickup. It's third and goal. Coach, I thought it was a bit unlucky because the pile really never stopped and they blew the play dead. Yeah, it's flip a coin there. I wish they would have let it keep going, but if he was getting tangled up or hung up and could have possibly gotten hurt, you want him to blow that whistle. But you know, we got to do a better job here just uh, moving the pile and staying up. And again, field conditions were hurting us and I decided here go for it on fourth down and that guy just come barreling in from from off the edge and kept us from scoring but uh, you know we had a good drive there and the field conditions again didn't help us we got to find a way to, to get points. Darkus Elliott makes a nice nice play six tackles last year in the win against the Pioneers so the Pioneers held out of the end zone fourth down and goal Pembroke would get it they would go three and out give it back to the Pioneers who were intercepted unlucky and I don't think that's really much Kyle Dickey's fault just think it was a good play. Yeah it was just uh, you know uh, DJ's got to keep his footing and then he reaches how I'm out there trying to get his hand on the ball and then their guy made a phenomenal catch it was a Good call by the officials, and it was an interception, and good play by their, their player, and we got to go regroup. And here comes a great player by one of our freshmen, Matt Simon. He uh, gets the big dog winner for that lick on Saturday there. Just a great hit, great job of avoiding the block. Matt's a freshman from down in the Atlanta, Georgia area, and expecting great things out of him. So a loss of six on the play, so it's second down. Make that third down and 13, and Seth Owen, again, just not a guy that – uh, they haven't had a whole lot of luck passing the football. As a matter of fact, they haven't scored the football very much, you know, on the season. So it's second down and 16. Rontonio Stanley for three yards. Cameron Thomas and Rocky Jones combined on the stop. And then Owen looking to pass on third down and long. Great job here by Ira Megan, one of our seniors. Another one from down the state of South Carolina. Makes a big interception for us. And two series and two interceptions. You can't ask for much more than that. And Addison Williams just does a great job with our secondary. And, thought our secondary played probably the best football game they've played. And I think the, really the reason is they played so physical on the run, on the edge out there that gave us a chance to do some things. And those safeties are filling, making big plays for us, and just happy for those guys. First and 10, D.J. Haney for 19 yards. Great run here. I thought he was going to sneak out there and score. Uh, good job making that first guy miss. We just keep feeding him the football, and he keeps getting three and four and five yards. He's just running it hard. Our kids up front are blocking their – Hot ends off doing what they got to do to give us some success. Two yards for Haney, and then a good pressure by the defensive front. Uh, Kadarius Mason, Matt Turner were strong all day for the Pembroke Braves, and so DJ Haney for nothing. And then Kyle Dickey going down the field in coverage, pass interference on Kenny Funning. Let's take the football inside the red zone. We go inside the 10, and DJ Haney can't even tell that's his number. It's muddy. He ran right over that linebacker. I mean, I'm <laughs> telling you, just. Knocked him out, and this is a good job by Kyle just sticking his nose up in there and getting across the goal line. And in those conditions, you got to find a way to do whatever you got to do to win, and uh, we found a way to have some success there running the football. Kyle Dickey, second rushing touchdown of the season as he gets into the end zone. The Pioneers cap a big drive, five plays, 46 yards after the Iram Aiken interception. And then LJ Stroman comes up with a big play for an interception for Pembroke. And we'll come back to that play. We'll revisit it. So Pembroke has it in some very good field position again here in the first half. They had a first and 10. Tamari White loses a yard thanks to Kashad Lyons, and they just couldn't pass it. B.J. Bunn for a loss of a yard because of Akeem Peoples, and then a ball that was nearly picked. Nearly picked two or three times. I thought we were going to pick it, and then I thought we were going to pick it while we were on our back, and just guys flying to the football making good things happen. And we're running around making plays, and I'm telling you, they have not blocked Kashad Lyons in any football game we've played, and there he makes a huge play for us. Kashad Lyons with a big stop, and again, that was on a fourth down play. So we move uh, later here in this first half, and just not a lot of running room very early. Chaz Mulder, DeAndre Johnson with the big stop. Seth Owen, no game because Kashad Lyons comes off the edge. So it's third down and 10, and Seth Owen just... Yeah, bad snap, just runs into some problems. Matt Simon and Devin Starnes. Great job flying to the ball. Ball's on the ground. We need to get to it, but good job uh, swarming it after he picked it up and making them punt the football. Pembroke has tied the football game up at this point, so we're tied at seven. And then uh, Kenny Funny, wow. Great catch by Kenny Funny. Fortunately, their guy fell down there, and Kenny made an unbelievable catch and gets the ball down the 20-yard line. Just a 
Nice easy throw by Kyle and a big time catch by Kenny Funny. Kenny Funny on the afternoon. Four catches, 57 yards. That was his long of 32 yards. Really the longest play of the game. Then Kyle Dickey finds Wes Powell. Great job. You're happy for Wes. Wes needs some success there and does a great job catching the football. Big touchdown. And See the few fans we got down on the sideline there getting excited and uh, just happy that he's able to get in the zone. Just a couple of plays, 53 yards, 39 seconds off the clock after the Pioneer defense forced a three and out, and the Pioneers would take a 14-7 to lead as West Powell two catches for 19 yards and a touchdown in this football game. And West Powell last week with the touchdown or with the, uh, the big rece reception in the Wingate game mm -hmm. on third down a couple of times, getting a lot more involved. But what I noticed about West is when Kenny Funny had that reception in the first quarter, he's the guy that's out there blocking the edge, so he's picks, picking up 10 and 15 more yards. Great decision by Mark to put to, to put Wes out there on the edge, and he's just sort of dominating those little corners, and we're able to run some screens and stuff, and then you put him at tight end, they got to be worried about him, and gets open on that play, and Kyle makes a good throw, and Wes has had a couple of really good ball games. He's got to keep it going. The Pioneers at halftime lead the Pembroke Braves 14-7. to Pembroke will be getting the football to start the second half, and that's when we come back with our second half coverage right after this on the Frankie DeBus Show. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, an electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Ryan Staten. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBusk Show. The pioneers lead 14 to 7 at the half. And Pembroke will have the ball to start in the second half. And coach, I'm sure you're, you're thinking, all right, we got to get a good stop here, and I think Pembroke puts their best drive of the day together. They pick up two third downs on the opening drive, and what they did is flip the field. In the third quarter, we don't even have a play of a highlight in the third quarter because we're inside our 20 for two possessions, and they're right around the 40 and the 45, but they can't move anywhere except they picked up the two big third down conversions. Yeah, they did. They put a couple drives together there, and we were unable to, and uh... You know, I told our football team at halftime, I wasn't sure what we were going to get in the second half, but we just needed to not, not, not get impatient, not get excited, go play our style of football. And uh, They did some good things early on. Uh, they ended up scoring to tie the game. and you know, We didn't hit a panic button. It wasn't what we wanted. It wasn't ideal, but we just kept playing football. It's an interesting second half into the overtime. We'll talk about that. Let's take a look at your second half highlights. Tusculum versus Pembroke. We're going to pick up where Pembroke scores a touchdown. That's in the fourth quarter. This is the fourth quarter touchdown, and it will be Tamari White's first rushing touchdown of the season. It capped an 11-play, 51-yard drive that took 6.52 off of the clock. Pioneers have the football first and 10. Kyle Dickey finds Deion Hicks. Good job here. Good throw. Good sticking on his chest. Deion, the, he actually took a shot right there. I'm glad he got up and was all right, but... Good decision by Kyle, and then we give it to big DJ Haney, who gets us a big eight, nine yards here the first time he handles it in this possession, and uh, he's hard to bring down. It's the first time in the second half that the Pioneers had picked up a first down. That was on the, the reception for Deion Hicks. Haney goes for seven, and then Haney finds a big hole and would go for 13 yards. Thought your offensive line did a great job. Good job getting hats on hats, moving the people and getting it to the second level. DJ does a good job moving the chains again. You notice it's extremely difficult to cut on the field, and I think that was a big problem. And Kyle, I think on this play you didn't really see, was sacked on the play for a loss of seven by Matt Turner. And big reason is because he just couldn't move. He was stuck literally in the mud. Boy, I wish we could have caught this one. Not a bad ball, hard ball to catch. Wish Justin would have been able to hang on to that in these conditions. It's probably asking too much, but good decision there by Kyle. Good throw. We just didn't convert. Just could not convert. Have to punt the ball away. So Pembroke will start from their 10-yard line. We're seeing our third quarterback of the afternoon for Pembroke. This is Andrew Goodman, who actually did some very nice things when he was able to get the snap. I thought uh, Hunter Cantrell hit a phenomenal punt here for us to pin them deep, and then we took the field defensively, and here's Kashad. He's going to tackle them both. He's going to take the guy that he's supposed to and then wrap up the, the quarterback as well. He's just in the playing so well right now. I just hope he can keep it going. 11 tackles, tying a career high, which he set last week against Wingate with four hits behind the line of scrimmage and two sacks, and here comes another one. Big play here by Kashad once again, another tackle for a loss. And, 
I should have given him two on that one before and given him another one there. He's uh, playing really well. All right, so the Pioneers do force a punt. Michael Doss hits his best punt of the day, standing inside his own end zone. Snapping was an adventure, and he hits one of 44 yards. So the Pioneers have the football from their own 45, and Kyle Dickey would find Kenny Funny. Yep, good job here, just throwing and catching. We're blocking downfield. Wes has just got to let this guy up right here. I think this is the one we got the penalty yep. on. I had to come back and replay it, but just playing aggressive football, and I guess those things happen. This is the end of the fourth quarter, and the Pioneers feel they have the drive. So you get the big play, and then you had the personal foul. They make a big play as DJ Haney uh, is introduced to Josh Barber for no gain. Kyle Dickey will find Houston. That's just uh, another fine play by Houston for seven yards. So it's third down and three. Then we get a false start, and yeah. uh, you, these things can't happen. No, it can't happen right here. And I know they were saying move, and you can see them all moving there, and I understand what they're saying, but that government, we can't be moving around on third down. It puts us in a bad situation, and we go right back to, uh, to Justin, who makes a catch. We come up fourth and one, and uh, I didn't make a quick enough decision here and put a little pressure on us, but we still, we got to get one yard here in this situation, and, and unfortunately we don't. Unable to get the yard, Blake Hickman and Scott Johnston come up to make the stop on Kyle Dickey, fourth down. Pembroke would go for it, a, a deep pass that would be incomplete, and then they would run the half out, and we'll go to half to uh, overtime, <laughs> and Pembroke will have the football. We win the toss, go to the overtime period, and Pembroke on first down, Rontonio Stanley for a yard, and then they start going backwards. Yeah, they get a penalty there themselves in this situation, and second and 15, and here we're running. Here comes Dominique James, and there's Cam Thomas making a big play. We've got to get him on the ground, keep him wrapped up, and it's third and forever, feeling really good about things. Uh, thought we were running to the football exceptionally well. They take their time out, and... Uh, they get a couple yards here, but I wasn't sure what they were going to do, but we do a good job. That's DeAndre Johnson from over in Memphis making a big play there on that running back. And I didn't think there was any way in the world this kicker would make a 48-yard field goal. And if it would have been from 48 and a half, he probably don't. But uh, he made the field goal. I went from feeling really good about things to not feeling very good at all about things right there, Brian. Connor Haskins just pure to make it 17-14 to 14 Pembroke with their first lead. And the Pioneers have the ball. And if Kenny Funny can hang on to this, who knows what happens after that, but I think momentum from one play to the next. Fernando Smith, his first carry of the game, he's been banged up, gets six yards. Kyle Dickey then will be sacked for a loss of eight. And then the decision. There was never a decision. It was, let's go to win the football game. I told him when we started the overtime period, we were going to win the dang football game. And it's fourth down here. And uh, I felt like it had just been too long a field goal to attempt. And we made a call, and uh, Kyle just makes the decision to go to to uh, Dion and puts it up in the air and gives him a chance and just goes up and makes an unbelievable catch. Well, it's a great shot right there and just goes up and brings the ball down against two defenders and uh, wow, celebration begins and happy for our kids, happy for our team. I actually went down there to start celebrating and I saw the pandemonium taking place so I turned around with the other way. I didn't get in the middle of all that mess. But, uh, it's a great feeling, Brian. I, I made a comment very rarely in your coaching career do you get to experience uh, a play like that, whether it be on the, the positive side or the negative side, but uh, it's once in a lifetime probably to be able to watch that and see that happen. And Happy for Kyle, happy for Dion, but really happy for our football team. Two times this year, the Pioneer football team has been involved in the last play, uh, pretty much. Uh, we talk about the North Greenville game. It was somewhat the last play that, that they, they put the field goal through, and now this one, there was no time. There's nobody keeping the time whatsoever, and so that, in a sense, ended it, and it was pandemonium. De Deion Hicks, three catches for 66 yards, that touchdown, a long of 27. Kyle Dickey, 13 of 18, two touchdowns, two picks, uh, a couple of tough interceptions, I should say, too. 32 was his long to Kenny Funny in that second half. But DJ Haney, 23 carries, 110 yards total. He lost two yards in a game like that in a team like Pembroke that lives behind the line of scrimmage. I mean, they had guys in double digits and tackles for loss this year. And he's a true freshman that you're throwing out there, and he's not hit behind the line of scrimmage. I thought great protection for your offense much of the day. Did a great job up front. We mentioned those guys. We were talking about players of the week. Uh, you know, all of our offensive linemen continue just to you know put that hat on and go to work every day. And Spencer Riley does a great job with those guys. And DJ's a downhill runner. He doesn't try to get outside and do anything fancy, and just really pleased with his effort. And I thought that really changed the game and gave us a chance to be able to run the football and do some things we needed to do. All right, you're, you're the quarterback position. You've got Kyle Dickey. You, you, you've already touched on it a little bit, but we're going to hear from him coming up too. The emotion that he had to have going into the start against Pembroke, was there that much communication with the coaching staff to him about putting it away, or was it just about the present and let's, let's deal with Pembroke this year? 
Yeah, we didn't talk at all about uh, you know what Kyle has or hasn't done or his, his fortunes or misfortunes. He's he's a fifth year senior that came back on this football team knowing uh, that we were looking for a quarterback, knowing that we were going to go out and battle and somebody was going to win the job, and it could have could or could not have been him. And you know, I, I really don't know that people know what that kind of person Kyle Dickey really is. He's an unbelievable person. He's a great guy. He's a strong Christian and believes in doing it the right way and just happy when a guy that gets in that situation can respond and good things can happen. And it's happened now for, for two ball games and you know, he's got two more opportunities left and I just hope he can continue to find a way to be successful. Pioneers victorious. This guy gets win 90, his first ever win against the Pembroke Braves in just four meetings. The 31st different opponent that Coach DeBusk has a win against for the school's all-time winning is football coach. We'll come back and talk to him about what's coming up this week in a short week. And as a matter of fact, by the time you see many of this on the uh, TV station, we're already play on Thursday night. So we're going to talk about Brevard and then we'll see what happens on Thursday itself. The Pioneers in overtime, their first overtime win since 1999. It is their second overtime win all time in the four overtimes that they've ever had. They do beat Jacksonville, 1999. Aaron Clarity was a wonderful game. Uh -huh. And then the Pioneers now against the Pembroke Braves, 20-17, to your final. We come back, our Players of the Week and our Applebee's Player Spotlight with Kyle Dickey when the Frankie DeBus Show continues. Green Coach Charters and Tours has been proudly serving the traveling public for over 65 years and is the official carrier of Tusculum College Athletics. If you have never traveled by Green Coach, may we invite you to join them for an exciting travel adventure. Visit online at greencoach.com. O'Grady snaps it. Cantrell gets the punt very high, and it will hit at the three, and Evan Dansby holds it inside the one-yard line, first and ten for the Bulldogs, and a phenomenal special teams play. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBunch Show. Tusculum knocks off the Pembroke Braves in overtime by a final of 20 to 17. One of the guys who was really looking forward to this start is fifth year senior Kyle Dickey. We talk a lot about that fact, but for this young man, this is huge for him. And the fact that he was able to deliver the game winning pass probably makes even more the responsibility of the quarterback and just being here and doing his job even more special. We had a chance to catch up with Kyle Dickey for our Applebee's interview. Welcome into our Applebee's interview for the Frankie DeBuzz Show. We're joined by fifth-year senior quarterback Kyle Dickey. Kyle in the game, uh, 13 of 18, couple of touchdowns. Of course, one pretty memorable, 165 yards. Also rushed uh, 41 yards in the game. Tough game, tough sledding. First, just take us through the, the final play, the final play in overtime, the final play of the game. Um, uh, it seemed like the whole uh, offense was pretty down after that, that third down, and um, Coach DeBus had to wake us up and uh, got us uh, realize we still have a chance. And um, so we went over our options, and I just I knew that I, I had Dion out there uh, on uh, just going straight to the end zone, and I knew if I if I didn't have anything open, I could you know give him a chance. And Dion does what he does; and he just makes a play on the ball. What is your reaction? when he brings it in. Uh, was it bone chilling? Was there a moment that you just zoned out? What, what was your reaction? Uh, I just took off after him, <laughs> just like everybody else, and had that huge dog pile on him. And it, was, it was fun. We're glad he's not injured. Uh, let's go back to the, really the beginning of the game, because it was a tough start, and I think the conditions warranted a couple of picks in the game. Um, but was it just difficult to get a feel for the football? Uh, absolutely. You know, there's a there's a lot you know that we left out there and that we could have hit on some plays and uh, if it weren't for those conditions I think we we, we hit on a couple of those but uh, you know, it was definitely tough and had to be addressed you know with play calling and, and just throughout the game. All right, 13 of 18. A lot of people say, well, that's not as many pass attempts as we usually have. People don't understand the conditions. It was cold. It was a bit windy. Uh, the field obviously was very slick. But DJ Haney runs for 110 yards. How comforting is it to know you can turn around hand off to a guy to get some big yards? Uh, he was huge. Um, and just like you said, the conditions, it, it wasn't perfect. And he was still just barreling right through there, going through guys, going through arm tackles. And he was a big part of the day. And he's a big reason why we won. Well, 13 completions has to be because of what you, the guys up front did. And I think against one of the better defensive lines uh, that we faced this year. Pembroke was a great defense. We knew that going in. 
So the fact that you actually had a pocket and could throw, I think, was pretty special on Saturday as well. Absolutely. It's a different game. West Powell gets involved. He gets a touchdown. You got Kenny Funny on the, I thought it was going to Jonathan Diliberto pass, and he comes up with an amazing catch um, just because of the flight of the ball. Uh, we had big plays, and we we were pretty special Saturday, right? Yeah. Uh, like you said, just those conditions, you're – they all expect us to run, and we had to, to pass the ball in some of those situations, and uh, we were able to get some big plays there that, that really uh, helped us uh, with the momentum and you know just staying in control of the game for the most part. It's a senior day. It's a storybook ending. Let's go back 2011, something you'd like to forget. So how special was it that it was Pembroke that you got the start this year against to get a win? Uh, it, was, it was pretty awesome. Definitely, uh, we talked about that a couple times. Just uh, definitely wanted to beat these guys, and um, glad we were able to get it done and the way we did. Kyle, congratulations. Great game. Thank you. That's Kyle Dickey for our Applebee's interview. Thanks to Kyle Dickey for our Applebee's interview. It's time now to take a look at our players of the week. And we'll start on offense with our Sodexo Offensive Players of the Week. We'll begin with DJ Haney, the freshman from Greenville, Tennessee, Greenville High School. 23 carries, 110 yards, a long of 19 for the year. 76 carries, 310 yards. Now the, school, the team's second leading rusher, along with two touchdowns. DJ was also named a Big Dog Award winner this week. Of course, Dion Hicks, the senior from Fresno, California, out of Fresno High School. Three catches on the day, 66 yards, a touchdown that will live in infamy in Pioneer football history. On the year, a disappointing 16 catches for 243 yards, but his two touchdowns have been huge for the Pioneer success. He becomes the 17th player with 1,000 yards for a career. He's done it in less than two years, now at 1,027 yards. Our Greenville Light and Power Defensive Player of the Week, we might as well call this the Kashad Lions Memorial. He is the senior out of Ellenwood, Georgia from Woodland High School. Now 11 tackles in the game, four tackles for loss and two sacks. It's identical to what he had behind the line last week, which were career best in a game. Now on the season, 78 tackles, 17 for loss and nine sacks for the reigning Defensive Player of the Week and the Tennessee Sports Writers Player of the Week. Kashad Lyons, 78 tackles on the year. Number one amongst defensive linemen in the South Atlantic Conference and in the region for his career, 163 tackles, 23 for loss, and 11 sacks. He's averaging double digits in tackles over the last five games. Cameron Thomas, the sophomore from Nicholasville, Kentucky, from East Jessamine High School. In the game, two tackles, one for loss, but yet another interception. On the year, Cam has 26 tackles, four for loss, and three interceptions on the year. Our Green Coach Tour Special Teams Player of the Week, Hunter Cantrell, the freshman out of Sparta, Tennessee, White County High School, had six punts, 34.2 yard average, along a 43 and two inside the 20. On a difficult day to punt the football, he now on the year has 16 inside the 20. And the reason it was difficult, because if the guy who was snapping it to you couldn't get it to you, then you had problems. But Ian O'Grady, for his efforts, was also named Special Teams Player of the Week. O'Grady, the redshirt freshman out of Orlando, Florida, from Dr. Phillips High School. Our Andrew Johnson Bank call of the game, well, we thought about it for a while and decided it would be the overtime winner, Kyle Dickey to Dion Hicks. We're in the first overtime, and this is the final play if the Pioneers cannot convert. The blitz is coming. It's picked up. Dickey's going to throw it deep for Dion Hicks. He goes up. And he's caught, caught it! He's caught it! He's caught it! Dion Hicks caught it! Touchdown! Game over! Pioneers win! As memorable as the play was, the numbers were not. Time for our Creekside Market post-game wrap-up in the football game. The Pioneers did outgain the Pembroke Braves as Kyle Dickey accounts for three touchdowns, including the 27-yard strike in a rain-soaked Pioneer field. Overtime, yes, it's the fourth time all time the Pioneers have gone overtime, now standing at 2-2. Two and two. The first overtime against Jacksonville University, 42-36 was the final in the season finale. That was the year we found out that Aaron Clarity is a pretty good football player. Tusculum in the game, Kyle Dickey, 13 of 18, 165 yards and a pair of touchdowns, but he also rushed for 41 yards in the game. Tusculum outgained a Pembroke, as mentioned, 322 to 195. Interesting that the Pembroke Braves attempted what, three passes in the football game, or I should say six passes in the game, completed two for just five yards. That was it, as they get the most of their yards on the ground in that football game. 
It was one of the more thrilling victories for the Pioneers, obviously, all time. DJ Haney comes up with his 23 carries, 110 yards. Dion Hicks, three catches. He becomes the 17th player in school history to record 1,000 receiving yards for a career, now 1,027. Jonathan Diliberto can be that next guy as he needs just about three yards to surpass 1,000 to become the 18th player in school history, over 1,000 yards. And again, what's amazing about that for Dion Hicks is he's done it in less than two years and in a season where he hasn't been able to catch the ball at all, which is amazing. There were some guys that made some memorable plays on the field on Saturday. 18 seniors playing their final game. Some were obviously very big impacts in the football game, and others were impacts for an entire career here at Tusculum College. At this time, we flash their pictures up on the wall and we talk a little bit about our 18 seniors. We start with C.J. Dawson. Dawson is a young man who's not gonna have a whole lot of stats, but a major in digital media represented on the football field and the practice field. Congratulations to C.J. Dawson. Jay Roberts, a physical education member from Anderson, South Carolina, Jay Roberts, one of those 18 seniors on the team. We just talked about him. Deion Hicks earned all-conference honors last year. 56 catches, now make that 59 catches, 1,027 yards and nine touchdowns for his career. Has a 17 yard per catch average, fourth in school history, digital media major from Fresno, California. Jeremy Wagner, you see Jeremy every game day at Pioneer Field, the guy carrying the American flag as he came out of the tunnel. Jeremy has shined on the Tus Tusculum offensive line in 17 career outings. Prior to returning to Tusculum, he served our nation with coverage and courage and valor in the United States Army in tours in Iraq and Afghanistan, where he was awarded the Purple Heart and the Soldiers, Soldiers Medal of Heroism. He's majoring in special education and a member of the Athletic Director's Honor Roll. Congratulations to Jeremy Wagner, Goldport, Mississippi, but he graduated from just down the road at Volunteer High School. A guy who we're, we, we will miss on that offensive line, Jake Bridwell. Appeared in 35 games on the offensive line for the Pioneers, a, an athletic director's honor roll honoree, majoring in criminal justice. Congratulations from Duncan, South Carolina, Jake Bridwell. Chaz Mulder, 33 games, 71 tackles, two fumble recoveries, a sports science major from Atlanta, Georgia, Chaz Mulder. Darian Crank. Today, he entered the game against the Pembroke Braves with 145 career tackles, three fumble recoveries, the eighth most in school history. He has two interceptions, one for a touchdown. He's a business administration major, and he has played well at Tusculum College from Fort Campbell, Kentucky, Darian Crank. Evan Dansby, Evan posted just over 100 tackles for his career, 106 to be correct. 19 passes defended, the seventh most in school history. An education major, he's from Augusta, Georgia, Evan Dansby. Guy we've talked a lot about, Kyle Dickey, a fifth year senior, versatile offensive performer. He's been quarterback, he's been wide out during his career. He has passed for over 700 yards and four, now make that six touchdowns, including two in last week's game against Wingate and two more in the game this past week against Pembroke. He's rushed for four touchdowns and hauled and, uh, and a scoring catch also in a game in his career. He's a sports science major, member of the Athletic Director's Honor Roll, and he is from McDonough, Georgia. He's Kyle Dickey. Jonathan Diliberto. Jonathan needs now 14 yards is what it is for to go into 1,000 yards for his career with 12 touchdowns. He made three touchdown catches, a single half to tie a school record in the College of Faith game. He's majoring in sports science, member of the athletic director's honor roll. He's from Lexington, Kentucky. Dominic James. Dominic has made 133 tackles for his career, including seven for loss, a business management major, and a member of the athletic director's honor roll. From St. Petersburg, Florida, he's Dominic James. Rocky Jones. Rocky started his career at linebacker, moved to defensive line. He has over 100 tackles for his career, including three fumble recoveries. He's majoring in math education, and he's from Anderson, South Carolina. He is Rocky Jones. Matt Levine has played in 33 games. One of his most memorable touchdown, a 38-yard touchdown against Georgia Southern, which is in our highlight on an attempted onside kick by Georgia Southern. Matt Levine takes it 38 yards to the end zone. Majoring in business administration, member of the athletic director's honor roll from Anderson, South Carolina, Matt Levine. 
Logan Cornelius. Logan will leave Tushkillum as one of the all-time leading kick scorers in school history. 182 career points, 104 made extra points, and 26 made field goals. He owns two single-season game records for extra points and extra point percentage, and has been named Conference Special Teams Player of the Week. Majoring in secondary education and member of the Athletic Director's Honor Roll, he's from Chattanooga. He's Logan Cornelius. Wesley Powell earned all-conference, all-region, and all-America honors at tight end last year. Enters today's game, or I should say enters this week's game, with 89 career receptions for 957 yards and now nine touchdowns. Can be that next guy over 1,000 yards still to go uh, with plenty of time to play this season. He's majoring in history education, major, a member of the athletic director's honor roll, and he's from Titus, Alabama. He's Wesley Powell and Laurente Archie. Laurente earned preseason All-America honors this year and well-deserved. In his career, he's made now over 250 tackles, the ninth most in school history. He also ranked in the top five with six interceptions, six forced fumbles, and six fumble recoveries. He's majoring in sports management, and he is from Fairburn, Georgia. He's Laurente Archie. And the guy who's made the biggest impact of the year, Kashad Lyons, may have saved his best season for last. Leads the team in tackles, sacks, and tackles for loss. And he leads the country as defensive lineman in those categories as he's recorded now four tackles for loss on two consecutive occasions with two sacks on two second two consecutive occasions in last week's win against Wingate and against Pembroke. He was the conference and the state player of the week. He has now 12, make that 13 career sacks, the 12th most in school history. He's a sports major, management major, and he is from Ellenwood, Georgia. He is a guy that we affectionately know as Big Country. He's Kashad Lyons, and he is the 18th and final senior who played their final Saturday home game at Pioneer Field. But there will be another game to come. We have enjoyed you guys. Appreciate your efforts and the time that you have given to Tuscaloosa football. But let's do it the right way and let's finish this thing strong. Tusculum versus Brevard. We'll talk about that when we come back after this. This is the Frankie the Bus Show. Andrew Johnson Bank was founded on conservative banking principles. Over the last 30 years, they have steadily built their balance sheet and increased capital by following prudent lending principles and avoiding risky investments. In uncertain times, you can continue to count on Andrew Johnson Bank. Your locally owned community bank. A strong heritage, a stronger future. Andrew Johnson Bank, member FDIC. Creekside Market has three locations in Southern Greene County to serve. So while you're traveling to or from any game, stop by and pick up a Hunt Brothers pizza for those football Friday nights or Saturday afternoons. Creekside Market, just off the 107. Locations on the Asheville Highway, Camp Creek, and the Irwin Highway, Creekside Markets in Greene County. And Welcome back into the Frankie DeBuff Show. Tusculum defeats Pembroke by final 20 to 17 in overtime. And now the Pioneers get to turn their attention to a different style, different cat, different guy. But Paul Hamilton, one of the nice guys all time. But I think Pembroke coach will show us a little bit about what Brevard's going to try to do because they abandoned the pass and they decided to run it. It's an alignment assignment week when Paul Hamilton's tornado comes. This is a scary football game, Brian. I mean, thank goodness we're, we're not playing a 9-0 and football team in Brevard. Uh, you know, but they are, they're hungry for their first win, and they do what they do well offensively. Mm -hmm. um, they, uh, they don't try to get fancy. They don't throw the football. They're just going to try to line up and run it. And we've not had a great uh, bit of success trying to stop them. We've won a lot of football games when we've played them, but uh, they're a scary football team. And Paul Hamilton just believes in what he believes, and he's a great, great, great person. Uh, I wish him a lot of success in, all year, except for this one time when we're getting ready to play him. So we got to have a lineman assignment football. They're going to run the option at us. We got to take a take a little dive in the quarterback in the pitch, and uh, they got a little little jeter. Little, he can fly if he gets outside. He's gone. I mean, they got some. They got a couple players that can make a difference, uh, but they're just they're just a good football team that lines up and does what they're coached to do. And they've been in every football game they've played mm -hmm. this year. They've scored a lot of points. 
they've given themselves a chance, and uh, you know they're a scary team that's looking for for their first win. It, you know, I talk a lot about momentum, and I think your team has some of that momentum right now, and sensing it and feeling it. Do you sense this team is? Got that momentum on their side. Well, we went to practice uh, on Sunday night after this big win, and you know there's not a lot of hoopla. I mean, there's sort of a business approach, and uh, I know our, our kids celebrated and enjoyed on Saturday night. But when we go back to work on Sunday, you can sort of sense what kind of team you have and where you are. And they just went back in and clocked back in and went to work. And you know, I feel like that's what we'll do for the week. And you know, uh, I'm excited about where we are. They have learned that if they will do what their coach to do as football players, we can have some success as a football team. And that's where we are right now. Our guys have got to do what we ask them to do uh, and buy into it, which they have. We've really bought into it defensively. We're starting to understand offensively what we got to do, and we're still being very consistent in our special teams game. So excited about what we've done, excited about where we can go here in the next couple of weeks. All right, Mother Nature has not been kind. I, I will give all credit to the field crews for what they have done. The field at the beginning of the year through the first month was as good as it has ever been. However, Mother Nature wasn't kind and came in and we tried to be light, we tried to be easy to the field, but it's just not there. How are the field conditions and, and, and what do you expect on a Thursday night? Uh, our field is, uh, is in bad shape. Uh, we have just destroyed it, quite frankly. Um, uh, we're, you know, our, our Chad Grind staff, Matt Gosnell, Buster Scott, David Martin, that whole facility's crowd, Brandy Bridwell, they just do an unbelievable job of, of just doing whatever they got to do and getting the field. It, it really hurts their feelings is what right. it's doing. It's bothering right. their pride because they put so much into it. Uh, but obviously there's nothing they can do when it rains and snows like it has. And, you know, I expect us to go line up and play football. Now, I believe the rain is going to be present again come Thursday night the way it looks. And we may be in another one of those. But, you know, that they got to put 11 on the field the same way we do, no matter the conditions. And I you know, hope we can stay healthy. hope that's the only thing you, you get concerned about sometimes. But we're going to go play a college football game and get ready to try to find a way to win. Congratulations. Thank you, Brian. Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk, his birthday was this past week. He's an old man now. So we say happy birthday as well. <laughs> You're really getting there. I'm an old man. He's an old man. Hey, don't miss out on the last home game of the year for the Pioneers as they take on the Brevard Tornadoes on Thursday night. We'll talk about it next week. Many of you, as you see this, I'll be asking you to come, and the game's already going to be played. So come to our second type of a home game against mm -hmm. Mars Hill, which will be the next week just over the mountain for the Mountain Border War. Paige, thank you very much for enduring the cold. Paige Roberts getting our video for the game this week and for Nathan Humbert, for Pioneer coach Frankie DeBus. The Pioneers defeat Pembroke, a final of 20-17 to 17 in overtime. For Pioneer Nation, you guys have a great week, and until next week, go Pioneers. This has been the Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk. Featuring coaches interviews, player spotlights, highlights, and statistical breakdowns. Presented by Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Green Coach Tours, proudly serving the traveling public since 1945. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Johnson City, Jonesboro, Morristown, Cleveland, and Greenville. Creekside Markets, don't pass by, stop by, with three locations in Green County. Special consideration from Comcast Cable through Xfinity. The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network.